I um, issued a statement about three or four days ago uh, expressing my concerns about some reports in the media that suggested that Atiku Abubakar had had meetings with some generals in the Nigerian military. And based on that, I now raised questions and asked what he was doing, why he was doing it, and so on and so forth. And I suggested that it is possible, if true, and that's the most important thing, if true, that um, there's a wider script, a hidden agenda, which would not augur well for this country. The texts were seen by millions of people all over the world. And of course, it raised something of an alarm. The following day, the military authorities responded by saying that there was no such beating, no such plan, nothing like that was in the offing, and they are great defenders of democracy, and so on and so forth. I think most of you would have seen that statement. At 6 a.m. the following morning, I now issued another tweet in which I welcomed the clarifications made by the military. I thanked them for doing so, and I expressed the fact that I believed what they said, that given the fact they've told us nothing like that happened, I'm more than satisfied with that. I commended them for being great guardians of democracy, and I made the point, and this is very important, that I never ever suggested in my tweets at any time that the Nigerian military as an institution were in the process of plotting any coup d'etat, and neither did I suggest that the military high command was involved in any such thing. But what I had said was that if true, it's good for us to know who these rogue generals are and so on and so forth. But now that the question had been answered and that they maintained that the report was fake, then I accept that, that it was a fake report and we have nothing to worry about. And that was the end of it. <clears throat> the day that I issued the initial statement, I should have said this earlier, I got a text message the very same day even before the military got into it, I got a text message from somebody who said he was a member of the DSS and that they, I should come you know, to their office at a certain time. To which I responded that I would prefer that they make it formal. I, first, I don't know who the person is and I really would not want to just get up and go somewhere unless I have a formal invitation. So it's important for me for you to note that because I will tell you that the invitation came in perhaps an informal manner, on the very same day I issued the tweet. So they took an interest in it right from the start. That's the DSS. But by the third day, what happened was this. Um, the, I had issued my statement. The day I issued my statement, accepting what the military had said, the People's Democratic Party and the Atiku Presidential Campaign Council saw fit to issue a statement calling for my arrest, despite the fact that I had made the clarification that I accepted what the military had said, calling for my arrest, my detention, and uh, so many other things. And of course, saying I simply never met with anybody. Well, let me say this to you right at the outset. Had it just been that it was they that spoke, I wouldn't have accepted what they said as being truth. But this is what they said nevertheless. Called for my arrest. And of course, I found it laughable and proceeded to my home in a very happy mood. That, I believe, was yesterday, I think. I think I'm getting it right. So, in the evening yesterday, I now got a letter from the DSS, formal letter, saying that I must respond and I must respond to the invitation and be with them today unfailingly. I was scheduled to be in court in Lagos today. And I had to struggle with how I was going to handle it because if I went to court and I ignored the invitation, of course, given the tone and given the fact that it's national security they were talking about in the letter, it may have implications for me and my family. And therefore I said, okay, let my lawyer be in the court and try to explain to the judge what had happened. I would prefer to simply be cautious and careful. And if I can go quickly and leave quickly, I can now go to Lagos. So I went to the DSS. 
and of course it was all about this issue of the tweet and so on and so forth and, 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 and basically um, they spent almost five hours, I think we got there at 10 o'clock in the morning, we left at about four or five or so, I can't remember, and um, I was subjected to a very thorough grilling, that's the word that I'll use, the word I'll use is grilling, um, they were very, very thorough, they were very, very um, inquisitive, and they were very professional in their approach, but at the same time I have to say they were polite, they were reasonable, they were rational, and um, though it was quite an ordeal, I felt that I was being treated in a very fair manner, and uh, I wasn't being oppressed, and it was very clear to me also that they were not acting on the orders or the requests of the People's Democratic Party. They made it very clear that even before that call came, I know that they had asked me to come. So this was the position, and during the course of the interrogation, some of the questions they raised, and of course the investigation is still on, so um, I've been asked to report back on Wednesday, uh, and possibly I'll be going back there once a week, I think it's left to them, but they suggested to me until they now decide whether they feel the need to take the matter up and charge me to court, or whether they feel that I've done nothing wrong. But during the course of the discussion, I think it's fair for me to mention one or two things. I think it's very, very self-evident that um, some of the things that were said were regrettable. Why do I say so? When news comes out, like somebody's meeting with army officers, um, perhaps one should have not simply said it and believed it and accepted it, or even said, well, even if true. Perhaps another course could have been taken, which is perhaps to say, okay, let me ask the authorities privately. Let me try and find out before I say anything at all. And I think I would concede that point, that look, you know, sometimes we have to be a little bit more circumspect, especially given the fact that they, put, like they pointed out that the, 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 the medium that issued that statement is virtually faceless. And, you know, so we can't rely on such things. And of course, when I say something on my Twitter handle or anything, it's like the whole world is listening. And apparently, what I said really sent shockwaves in a number of places, really sent shockwaves. And some people were very hurt by that. And I think it's regrettable that that was the course that was taken. I'm always the first to admit when things are not done in the right way. But the most important thing, like I pointed out to them, was that the intention was very clear. The intention was to ensure that the authorities were on top of this situation and perhaps would now investigate Atiku and all the others to know if it's true or if it's not true. And they responded the following day. So I think that was really where um, there was a source of angst on their part, that look, we could have handled it differently. And of course, there were one or two other issues. But the most important thing is this. When asked to come to a security agency, any security agency, and perhaps one that is dealing with national security, my inclination as a responsible, decent, civilized person and a patriotic Nigerian is to respond by going. Unlike others who were invited and who refused to go. And we know who those people are up till now. I believe if you have nothing to hide, you go. As long as you have confidence in the system. And I have absolute confidence in the system. I have absolute confidence in the fact that the DSS is impartial, and I am deeply encouraged by the fact that they've taken up this matter because I have nothing to hide. And though it was a very difficult, I've been, I've been interrogated by many security agencies, the police, the FCC, for the last 15 years I've been incarcerated, I've been in and out, all sorts, I've seen all sorts. But let me tell you, the place anybody doesn't really want to go, I would suggest is probably the DSS. It's a very, very challenging place to have to go. But I thank God that it went well. I thank God that as far as I'm concerned, I've done nothing wrong. And I thank God for the fact that I'm ready to see this through uh, and take it to its logical conclusion, knowing that I'm innocent of any wrongdoing. And I have faith in the system that they will also see that. Let me just end with this. I, it, it may come up in the question session, but I gather there was 
a statement issued by the PDP today. Um, I'm not sure if you're aware of that. I was told you're not aware, right? Oh, that's a pity. Um, well, I'm told they, were, they issued a statement calling on the DSS to widen the investigation and to, you, you, are you aware of it? Yes. Uh -huh. And so on and so forth. Um, well, maybe I will let you, somebody put that to me. I can respond. Or do you want me to respond to that now? I should respond. Okay. Let me go back and correct me if I'm wrong, because I didn't say it. I was told that they said that they thanked the DSS for inviting me. They said that I'm not a believer in Nigeria. They said I'm linked to IPOB. They said at the same time I linked to Sunday Buhu and uh, his organization that I want Nigeria to break. And they should investigate that aspect and so many other things that I'm uh, basically a terrorist, somebody that should be locked up. And fine. Now, my response to that is this. And I hope some of you are familiar with Shakespeare, because I love Shakespeare. My response is simple. Theirs is a tale told by an idiot, filled with sound and fury, signifying nothing, absolutely nothing. And I would suggest that they focus on the real issues, focus on their candidate and whatever they believe their candidate has to offer. They do not control the security agencies of this country. They are not in charge, and it's not for them to dictate anything. If anybody should be investigated, arrested, prosecuted, and jailed, it should be their presidential candidate. Why? Because he confessed in a tape, which we all heard, an audio, speaking about how he defrauded the whole country and stole public funds through SPVs. We've discussed this before. So before any of them will cast aspersions against any of us, whether our candidate, our media directors, our party, or any of our party leaders, let Atiku come and explain this SPV, and let him subject himself to investigation, just as I have done. And let others that have refused to go to the DSS when they were called in. Let them show a bit of courage. You know who these people are. I don't want to mention names. Let them display a little bit of courage. Let them also go and subject themselves to investigation. And let's see what will happen. You know the difference? They have something to hide. But those of us that have nothing to hide will always go forward boldly when we're called upon to do so. Especially where the agencies involved are impartial, professional, clear thinking, and very, very thorough.